You know, there was a book I loved. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking, as you can tell by the tree over here, sometimes Christmas isn't all that it's made up to be. You know, sometimes Christmas, our experience of Christmas is kind of like this tree. It's, it leaves a little to be desired. But you know, in the confusion that can come with any time in life, it could always be worse, couldn't it? You know, I read a, a great story uh, of a man who, Mike, um, he actually had a pretty good job. He worked on the 78th floor of the World Trade Center. Uh, pretty good job up until September 11th, 2001. He was sitting at his desk up on the 78th floor, floor but he wasn't alone. Underneath his desk was his uh, faithful companion, a guide dog. His uh, two-year-old yellow lab was with him. You see, Mike was blind, and when the impact of the plane hit the building that night, and the building began to shudder, you can imagine the dog roused from its sleep and ventured from beneath the desk and waited for a command to spring into action. And really unsure of which way to go to escape the chaos of the situation, Mike just took a firm grip of that harness, and he just gave the command forward. And the dog did what she was trained to do. She took control of that situation with the smoke and noise, congestion and confusion filling the hallways. The dog purposefully and determinedly steered Mike straight from his desk to the center stairwell, down 1,463 stairs to fresh air and freedom. You know, you think of a situation like that, and I'm always amazed at service animals and what they're able to do, what they're trained to do so well. But you think about all the chaos of that day, can you imagine being in that setting also being blind and having to totally trust that the one who had been your companion is faithful to do what he or she is trained to do so well? And really today, we're going to be talking about when life is confusing. And you may be looking at me going, I'm already confused. I, I see dots, <laughs> yellow, red, blue, these dots. Come here, Jerry. Jerry Jr., come here, man. Give a big round of applause, Mr. Jerry Jr. <laughs> or like I call him, Romeo. So, hey, Romeo. What's your favorite color? Blue, good choice, good choice. Is that, you sure that's your favorite? Well, I want you to think about your favorite color, okay? Because I'm going to have you choose one of these colors, okay? It doesn't have to be blue, your favorite. It could be red and yellow. Don't just choose blue because you're wearing a blue shirt, I'm wearing a blue shirt, the bang back here is blue. I'm not trying to persuade you in any way to choose blue, okay? You could choose red because, you know, red's Christmas or yellow because we're all happy at Christmas. But I want you to think about, okay, have a seat just for a minute. But I want you to think about which color. Don't feel like I'm forcing blue on you, though, okay? It's a free choice. You know, I don't know about you, but throughout my life, I've made choices. And I've, I've tried to do the things that God's led me to do. But there oftentimes results in a level of confusion. When life just doesn't seem to be going the way I would like. Um, and, you know, oftentimes in the midst of that confusion that I feel, I don't know if you've ever felt that way. You ever kind of feel a little confused? I mean, can y'all stand up? I'm confused just looking at this right here. Come on, come on. You can't wear that and not expect to be called upon. Turn around. Anyone confused? Okay, okay, sit down. Sit down. See, I get confused easily, squirrel, and um, it doesn't take much. But in my life, oftentimes the confusion that I experience also leads me down some paths where I, I, I stop trusting. I stop believing that behind the chaos and confusion of my life is a God who is sovereignly in control. This week I, I had a vivid picture of this experience because I got to see Sean Lee this week pick up his Christmas tree that was much better looking than this one, decorated with light, and turn it sideways and try to move it from a room that was filled with water in his house that's not supposed to have water in it. His living room, about two inches thick, 
of water because of a pipe that broke. And he's trying to get the tree from one room to the other, and ornaments are dropping, and you know, it's chaos. And I just started laughing in the midst of that, and I thought, hey, Sean, Merry Christmas anyway. <laughs> And, you know, life is like that sometimes. You know, this isn't a far fetch from how we are at life. And, you know, what's funny, even when you think about the Christmas story in Matthew, the, the Gospel of Matthew, which we're going to be looking at tonight, even the story of Christmas is a lot more confusing than we want to think. You know, tonight we're going to rejoice by looking at a character named Joseph. And I know when you think of Joseph, if it were, it were any other time than right now at Christmas time, you would go, Joseph, I know that guy. He's the guy in the Old Testament. You know, the coat of many colors. He was sold into slavery by his jealous brothers. But ultimately, right, he was vindicated by God by having his own Broadway musical produced about his life. And a very good one, by the way. But you know, this time of the year is the only time we really think of the other Joseph. It's at Christmas time when we think about the surrogate father, the, the stand-in father, the soon-to-be husband of Mary. And do you realize that in all of the story of his life, there's not a single word recorded in the Bible. He's always in the background. He's always in the shadows. He just kind of is the, pay, uh, the, the, the patron saint of quiet people. But when you think about him, he sings no song like Mary. He proclaims no prophecy like Zechariah. He prays no prayer like old Simeon. There's really nothing to show for him. No pretension, no pomp and circumstance. And yet he was chosen to be the man to raise the Son of God. And I want you to look with me. It will be on the screens above you about the story of his life of Matthew, and it's in the first chapter of Matthew, and I love this story. It begins in verse 18, and it says, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, okay, y'all understand that, right? She was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel. Which means God with us. And when Jesus, Joseph woke up, he did... What the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate the marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. I love this story of Joseph because it really illustrates a couple of things we need to remember in the midst of the confusion in our lives. The first thing we've got to understand and we've got to buy into is we have to be open to God's leading. You know, when you look at those first verses in there about what he says, but after he had considered this, before the angel spoke, before anything, Joseph was trying to figure out, another verse says that he pondered on these things. He thought on these things. And I want you to try to imagine being in his position, in Joseph's situation, trying to explain the unexplainable pregnancy of his fiance to family and friends. You know, I think sometimes we sterilize the Christmas story. Could you imagine being Mary, being Joseph, being religious people, surrounded by people that were very clear about the law, and there was a lot of explaining to do. 
try to wrap your, your mind around what was ahead for them, that Mary was con- had a child conceived by the Holy Spirit. Just in a few months, he would be making a deal with a Bethlehem innkeeper for a quiet corner of a stable, that he would be finding boiling water and searching for clean strips of cloth for the delivery, that he might be changing the very first diaper of the Son of God. That soon he'd have to pack up everything again and move quickly to Egypt to get away from destruction that was coming, the desire to kill this baby. How about you? How would you have responded if you were in Joseph's place? Maybe you would say, hey, not me. God, I'm not ready for adulting. I'm not ready for that. My kids say that all the time. That adulting thing, Dad, it's way overrated. Or maybe you said, you would say, I swear I did not have relationships with that woman. I didn't. I promise. Or maybe you said, what a bad dream, man. I've got to stop drinking Red Bull at night because it's really doing stuff to me. But, you know, I want you to notice the attitude that uh, that Joseph had even before the dream. He's thinking about what's going on. He doesn't close the door to the possibility that God might be up to something, that God might be leading him into what would apparently be a very confusing situation. And then when God finally reveals the plan, Joseph's open to his leading, and he's positioned to be used by God. You know, a great lesson we learn from this is that we don't have to postpone our joy just because we don't have all the answers. We don't have to understand everything, that when we're confused, we can still trust that God is in control. And you know, someday, we're going to have hindsight, 2020 hindsight. And someday, we're going to be able to see that God was leading us That God was leading us in every choice that we made. Come here, come here. I'm going to see if I can. Um, You mentioned earlier, you have free choice, okay? You can choose anything. You can choose this one. Yellow. What is that in Spanish? You know, Amarillo. amarillo. Very good, very good. You can choose this one. Don't. You can't touch them though, okay? You can't touch them, not scare you. But you can choose this one. I'll just make it a little lower there, okay? Which is red or rojo, Rojo, very good. And and I'll just make this one taller, okay? I'm not trying to influence your decision in any way, okay? But you did say that blue was your favorite, right? Or yellow, yellow or red, right? I want you to choose one of them, okay? You got one? Mm -hmm. Okay, which one? What do you want? What color? Oh, you want that one. Okay, so I'm just going to put this right here because, are you sure? Here, consult with the audience. Do you think you should choose yellow? How many of you think you should choose yellow and not blue? (sighs) Yellow? How many want to see them move back to blue? Please? Okay, see see all these people that want you to, it'd work a lot better if you choose blue, okay? Um, You want yellow, right? Okay, go sit down. Go sit down. Total free will. I'm not going to try to manipulate you in any way. Um, <clears throat> but you know, even in life when we honestly feel like God is saying, you know, you have complete free will. Choose. You can choose A, B, C. The one thing that I believe we have to be aware of is that God is a sovereign omnipotent, all-knowing God. And he wants to lead us in every choice. We just have to, do you feel like God wants you to have yellow? <laughs> pray about it, okay? I'm going to continue a little bit. Just pray, you know, ask God's, God's wisdom, you know, whether yellow, don't let anyone influence you. It's totally your choice, okay? But you know, the second thing is not only do we have to be open to the fact that God is going to lead us in every choice we make. He led Joseph to choose, to trust. But he also led Joseph to be obedient to his leading. And Joseph was a great example of being obedient to God's leading. And notice, how does Joseph respond to the message in the dream? I love this response in verses 24 and 25. It says here that when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him. 
He simply did what God commanded him to do. As crazy as it sounds, as life-altering as it might be, he simply did it. Notice the depth of Joseph's obedience. He obeys promptly. He doesn't wait around. He doesn't try to come up with some excuses. He doesn't come, come up with plan B, C, or D. He just simply obeys, and he also obeys thoroughly. He takes Mary to be his wife. He names the child as he was instructed. Jesus, not Jerry Jr. or Jerry Andreas or Jerry, I'm not, you know, but he just, he did exactly what God told him to do, promptly, thoroughly. And you know, Joseph didn't say, I'm going to obey God as soon as God gives me all the details. As soon as I know who, what, when, where, and why. I need some kind of reassurance from you, Lord, that everything's going to work out in the end. Joseph doesn't do it. He just rolls out of bed, and he obeys God. No delays, no excuses, no cutting corners. Just simple, thorough, immediate obedience. And here's a great lesson for us in this passage you know, the true joy that we're looking for this Christmas, it's found by being in the middle of God's will. We often think that joy is going to come from circumstances, things that are easy, roads that are easy to... But what we find in the Christmas story is the joy that we sing about 2,000 years later is the joy of Joseph and Mary simply obeying what God told him to do and walking in obedience. Are you willing to obey when God leads you? Okay, Jerry, last chance. Come on, man. It's the last chance. Okay? A lot hinges on this, okay? You can blow the whole sermon right here. Um, <clears throat> no pressure, okay? Now, you chose yellow. I'm going to make that one low, and, and let's make this one really high, okay? Red. And blue, let's bring this back down. You can choose right now. This is your last chance. You've, you started with blue. You went to yellow. This is your last chance. Whatever you choose right now is your final choice. Okay? Are you ready? You can stay with yellow. You can go to red or blue. Totally your choice. Where do you want it? Red. Are you sure? All right. Here. I want you to do something for me, okay? <clears throat> you know, I'm really glad that you chose to do that because in this little envelope I have a, a, a prediction of what you were going to do. And you notice there's only one thing in there, right? Okay, here, just take that and just read that, okay? Because I can't understand anything it says. Um, hold that up and let's see if we can show it even. What's it say? Usted, oh, usted. Usted elegirá rojo. Wow. And what does that mean? You, you, uh, you will choose red. Red. Very good. You did a great job, man. <laughs> you know, great choice. I, got, I was worried there. I thought you were going to blow it for the first little bit. You know, I was patient with you. I, I worked with you. You know, sometimes in life, it's, it's just like that. Is we just feel like we're having to make the craziest choices, and we're trying to find joy in the midst of this. And we're just waiting. And I know what you're thinking right now, aren't you? I wish you would have chosen blue. <laughs> I wish you would have stuck with yellow. But you know, God is not confused, even when we're confused, even when we don't know how everything is going to come out. God's not confused. God's got a plan. And you know, this Christmas, I want to challenge you, you don't have to postpone your joy. You don't have to wait until better days to experience the joy of Christmas. You know, instead... We need to let it become an opportunity for God to move in a mysterious way. And to do what only God can do is to lead us and allow us to obey 
And as crazy as the choices in our lives may be, as we simply choose to follow His will, in the end, He's going to say, you did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to bear much fruit. God has chosen you, and He has chosen to show Himself to you, to reveal Himself to the world around you, and to fill you with the joy that comes from Christmas regardless of the type of Christmas you might be having. Consider that this, God may just be setting you up for a Christmas miracle. But are you willing to be open? And are you willing to be obedient to the way God lives? Now having this attitude will not magically change the confusing circumstances in your life. What it will change is it will change you. It will change your choices. It will change your outcomes. But when you're open and obedient to God who promises to work all things for our good, if you simply follow God's lead, you know, just like Mike up on the top floor of that tower that was about to come down, although he was blind, although he was confused, he was able simply to trust the leadership of that guide dog. And you know, if you are willing to trust the leadership of God in your life, maybe you also will find a new freedom, some fresh air, and the joy that comes this Christmas. And you know, before you know it, you're going to be able to smile, and you're going to be able to look to those around you. Even when your house floods, even when things don't go the way you want, even if you have the ugliest Christmas sweater of the season, you guys win. That is stinking awesome. You're going to be able to look around and say, Merry Christmas anyway. Let's close in prayer. Fathers, we come before you tonight. Lord, we are reminded of the true meaning of Christmas. That it is all about you. And the Father, the circumstances that we find ourselves, even though they may not be ideal, even though they may be challenging upon us, the stresses that we may be under, Lord, just like Joseph, we don't even have to go on record. We can remain quiet and simply listen and to follow your lead. And Father, I pray that as we simply are open to your leadership and obedient to your leadership, that the Christmas that we experience will be one of true joy, one of an intimate relationship with you, one of true freedom. It's in Christ's name that we pray.